All right, guys, so this is uh, our first real training session. Um, so for this, uh, this first section, we're going to be covering conductor sizing, conduit sizing, deration calculations, and adjustment factors. Uh, so here's just an overview. Um, so we're going to do conductor sizing, grounding conductor sizing, or conduit sizing. Uh, durations and then examples and practice. Okay, so conductor sizing. So this is NEC table 310.15B16. And you should have all that in uh, that packet there. Um, so this, this table is really used for determining the appropriate size for your conductors. Um, so basically you're going to be looking at these ampacities and uh, you want your conductor ampacity to be larger than or equal to the ampacity of the overcurrent protection device. Um, so basically the size of the circuit, you need to make sure that the ampacity of your conductor is larger than that overcurrent protection. <clears throat> For example, a 60 amp circuit, um, it falls in between these two values here, so we have to go to the next largest. So that would be a number four. And that's, we're talking about copper here. So copper is on the left side, and aluminum or copper clad aluminum is on the right. <clears throat> Oops. And you'll see I highlighted different sections. We'll get more into that a little bit later. Um, but there's, there's reasoning behind that, and it has to do with the terminations. Um, of the equipment. Um, basically, larger conductors will be using 75 degree uh, Celsius temperature ratings, um, and the smaller conductors will be using 60 degrees Celsius temperature ratings. Uh, so, conductors can also be run in parallel uh, to achieve higher ampacities while utilizing smaller wires. Uh, so, for example, if we were looking to uh, run wire for a 400 amp circuit. We could use a 600 KC mill wire, which is good for 420 amps, or we could just double up on a 3 aught at 200 amps. So that would be a total of 400 amps. Um, so, you know, there's some variation uh, depending on how we want to do the design. Um, sometimes a single conduit, single conductor set is better. Um, Sometimes parallel sets are better. <clears throat> That's often determined uh, on site and by the contractor. <clears throat> Sometimes bending smaller wires is easier to do than bending those thicker gauge wires. Uh, so moving on, oh, went too far there. Okay, so next we move into grounding conductors. <clears throat> so these uh, diagrams are pulled directly from uh, the NEC, uh, the 2017 NEC specifically. Uh, so you'll see here we've got you know an example of service equipment. We've got three aught conductors coming in. Um, we've got our neutral up here, and then our entire grounding system. <clears throat> So when we're creating our one-line diagrams uh, and we have you know, our, our service grounding, this is what that is in reference to. You'll see you got your ground rods, your ground rings, your concrete encased electrode, which is also often called a UFER, and then um, also an underground metal water pipe. Um, so this is like a standard, typical service. Um, this diagram here is showing, uh, you know, like a gutter assembly with this neutral terminal block and the various grounding connections there. Um, you'll see you've got your main bonding jumpers and your supply side equipment bonding jumpers. Um, so when, you, when you're constructing your one line, you'll see um, uh, MEB or MBJ uh, on, your, on your grounding. Um, details, and this is what that's referring to, your main bonding jumpers and your equipment bonding. 
So down here we're showing a equipment grounding conductor. So that's from our service equipment to our load. So if we had like a meter disconnect set up here, this would be our panel. We have the equipment grounding in between those two. So that's just a basic overview. There's, there's a lot more that goes into all of these, um, you know, sizings, whether it be your, uh, your main conductors or your grounding conductors. There's just a ton of stuff in the NEC. So if you want to take a look at that, you can read a little bit more into it. Um, there's a ton of information there, so uh, there's no shortage. <clears throat> so when we're grounding or when we're sizing our grounding conductors, uh, the first thing we want to really do is determine what type of grounding conductor we're sizing. So whether that be our service grounding conductors, our main bonding jumper, system bonding jumper, or main equipment bonding, or our equipment bonding conductors. So 250.66 here, this is what we'll use to size our service grounding conductors. Uh, 250.102 C1 is what we use to size our main bonding jumpers, system bonding jumpers, and main equipment bonding. And this last table here, 250.122, is used for equipment grounding conductors. Now you'll see there's ver they're very similar, um, but there are some slight variations. Uh, typically, your equipment grounding conductors are uh, smaller in size than your service conductors, and I'm sure you've seen that um, reflected in, in our drawings and designs. <clears throat> so moving on. Uh, so once we size our conductors, um, then we need to make sure that our conduit sizing is accurate. Uh, so before sizing the conduit, make sure that the conductors are sized properly. And this is including any durations or any um, additional adjustments that may need to be made. Uh, you want to do that first before sizing your conduit because, you know, if you have to upsize your con conductors, you may also have to upsize your uh, conduit. Uh, so the table below here uh, depicts the dimensions and percent area of conduit and tubing. This is uh, for electrical metallic tubing, EMT. Um, the sum of the areas of the specified conductors must be less than the allowable conduit area. Um, so we're basically going to be looking at this section here. So over two wires, uh, it's a 40% fill is what we're allowed. Um, so you've got your, your con conduit size here and the allowable area. I usually use inches squared. Um, you can use millimeters squared, wh whichever will work. Um, I, I typically like to use inches squared. Uh, so this is what we're using for our conduit. And these tables are used to determine the area of our conductors. <clears throat> so once again, you'll be looking at the inches squared column. Um, but you'll also need to determine what type of wire we'll be utilizing. So you'll see you got your RHH, RHW here. Um, you've got your THW, THHW, and your THHN. Typically, we'll generally be using either THHN or THHW. Um, so you'll probably want to be utilizing these tables here. <clears throat> so once, we, once we've determined what type of wire we're using, we want to um, determine the area for all of our conductors. So you'll see on this next table, it kind of broke it down. <clears throat> I'll have to flip back and forth a little bit, but the conduit sizing, we assume two inch EMT at 40% fill. This is the allowable area, 1.342 square inches. And now this is, this is for a 200 amp circuit, so keep that in mind. Um, depending on your circuit, this will vary quite a bit. Um, so we would be, typically with our designs, we'll be using three aught conductors, and we have three of those. So we're looking at THHN here. Uh, so if we go back to the last table, T 
THHN, three aughts, and our value is 0.2679. So we take that and we multiply it by three because we have three um, conductors that we will have our two hots and our neutral. So those all need to be factored into that calculation. And then we also need to factor in our ground. So a number two, 0.1158. If you look at number two here, 0.1158. And keep in mind, you have to be referencing the correct wire type. Um, and that's largely dependent on um, if we go back to this sheet here. this here. So you'll see up at the top, you've actually got your wire types. So 75 degree rated conductors, THHW, uh, and then your THHNs are 90 degree rated. So you have to take that into consideration when you're actually uh, doing these calculations. And so once I have these values, I sum them up. 0.9195, which is less than our 1.342. So this is acceptable. Two inch EMT is adequate to handle the four wires, including the ground wire, um, as indicated with that calculation. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll want to do this um, when we're sizing circuits, you know, whether we're working in three phase, um, single phase, you know, that's always something that we want to consider. Um, most of our drawings are pretty standardized, so they're, you know, from job to job, there's not a whole lot of variation, which is why you don't see, um, you don't really have to work through this calculation too often, but this is how we've arrived at um, those standards, and this is, this is basically what you would need to do if you had to size a different circuit uh, with different conductors and conduits. Oops. Um, so here's a, you know, a pretty basic example of something that we'll typically see out on site. Um, so we got our service entrance here with our service conductors. Uh, we've got our grounding system, and you'll see that we've got our MEB and MBJ. That's the main equipment bonding and main bonding jumper, as we had discussed earlier. Um, and here we have conductors with our equipment ground. So you'll see the equipment ground varies from the service ground, which technically this number two here is oversized. Um, and that's just kind of a standard that we use with uh, these various carriers. Um, there's no code violation for oversizing a conductor. Um, only, there's only an issue if you're undersizing. So that's perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then this is another example of a branch circuit feeding another panel with another uh, um, equipment grounding conductor as well. So you got your service grounding, your main bonding jumper, supply bo bonding jumper, and main equip bond equipment bonding, and then your equipment grounding conductors here. So now that we've kind of gone through the basics of sizing the wires, uh, we'll touch on derations um, and adjustment factors. So this table here, um, you know, there's, there's a couple varying instances where we'll use deration calculations or they're required by the NEC. Um, this first instance uh, is for NEC table 310. 0.15B2A. Um, it depicts ambient temperature correction factors. Um, so this is used when uh, conductors are run along a rooftop or exposed to direct sunlight. Um, that's typical of uh, a good deal of cell sites. Um, so you know we'll need to take that into account. Um, you know make sure you're looking at where your c conduit and conductors are routed, and if they're along a rooftop. Um, exposed to direct sunlight, we'll need to take this into account. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is utilize these ambient temperature values here. 
Um, you're going to want to look up the highest recorded temperature of the city in which your project is located. And that's what you'll basically be using to determine your adjustment factors. So you'll take your temperature and then determine your uh, adjustment factors based on that temperature. Um, the temperature rating of the conductor to be utilized will be dependent upon the size of the conductor being derated. So that's once again referring to the 90 degree, 75 degree, or 60 degree columns. <clears throat> and we'll get a little bit more into that, I think, in a slide or two. Um, so the second instance, our most common instance that we'll use uh, some sort of deration calculation is um, when we have more than three current carrying conductors in a raceway or cable. Um, so this NEC table 310.15B3A uh, is representative of those adjustments. Um, so another way to, to say that is this calculation is required when multiple circuits are run in a shared conduit. So you'll see that depending on the number of conductors, you'll have to derate by a certain percentage. Um, so you'll also see that as we increase the amount of conductors in a conduit, we have to derate uh, more and more. So, okay, so this is kind of where we're getting into um, the NEC requirements for your temperature ratings. <clears throat> so this is NEC 110.14C1, and I just included this table again for reference. Um, it's not actually the same in the same section as this, uh, this code section here. Um, so A, it, this is uh, basically what the code section says. Uh, termination provisions of equipment for circuits rated 100 amperes or less or marked for 14 AWG through one AWG conductors shall be used only for one of the following. So it's basically saying anything that's a number one or smaller, we're going to be utilizing the 60 degree column, conductors rated for 60 degrees. Um, you know, there are some exceptions where we can make adjustments. Um, conductors with higher temperature ratings, provided the ampacity of such conductors is determined based <clears throat> on the 60 degree ampacity of the conductor size used. Um, so we'll get a little bit more into this once we actually run through a deration calculation. You'll see where this applies. Uh, but basically it's saying that we can take we can use a 75 degree rated conductor um, for a specific circuit, but if we're doing that, if it's a number one or smaller, we have to use these values. So we can realistically be using one of this, these circuits or one of these conductors, but we're not actually able to use these ampacity values. We have to use the values for the 60 degree column. Um, so a similar thing for the uh, conductors larger than number ones. So termination provisions of equipment for circuits rated over 100 amperes or marked for conductors larger than one AWG shall be used only for one of the following. And conductors rated for 75 degrees C or conductors with higher temperature ratings provided the ampacity of such conductors does not exceed the 75 degree C ampacity of the conductor size used. Um, so it's, a, it's similar here, you know, you can use a 90 degree C uh, conductor when you're derating, but you can't exceed these ampacity values. So we'll, show, we'll get a little bit further into that here. Um, <clears throat> so this is what we'll typically show on our drawings when we're uh, depicting these de sort of deration calculations. Um, so this is for a 200 amp circuit uh, being derated for ambient temperature corrections. Um, this is typical for something uh, conductors run along, <clears throat> along rooftops or exposed to direct sunlight. 
So, um, <clears throat> Might, might have made a mistake on that. So if we go back to this table, um, our temperature for this particular instance was 105 degrees. So we'll be looking at the 90 degree column and the 75 degree column. So our values are 0.82 and 0.87. And you can see that here. So we've called out our temperature that we're utilizing. <clears throat> and then we've got our 75 degree rating and our 90 degree rating. So 0.82 and 0.87. So for a 200 amp circuit, uh, we're going to calculate using a 90 degree C conductor uh, such as THHN. Um, and we're going to look at utilizing four aughts because we are derating um, this 200 amp circuit and three aughts, you can see if we have to derate at all, we're going to be under that 200 amp value. So we'll take our 90 degree C 4 aught at 260 amps, and we'll multiply that by our 90 degree adjustment factor, which is 0.87, and the result is 226.2 amps. Now you'll see that 226.2 is less than 230 degrees. So we meet the requirement that we can't exceed our 75 degree column. That's what that entire, that's what this entire code section is in reference to. When we derate our new conductors, we cannot exceed that 75 degree column. So since our new value is less than that, then those number 4 aught THHN conductors are acceptable for the new circuit. And our ampacity is that 226.2 value. <clears throat> uh, so after you're done derating, um, don't forget that you're also going to have to adjust your grounding conductor uh, based on that deration adjustment. Um, so you'll see two examples here. Uh, we've got an example for a 100 amp circuit and a 200 amp circuit. Uh, since we were just talking about the 200 amp circuit, we'll just look at this one. <clears throat> so on this table, we've got our previous wire size and our new wire size. So we had three aughts previously. Now we have four aughts. Uh, and our circular mill values for each of those wires. Uh, we also show our previous grounding wire size, which was a number six, and the circular mills for that as well. And what we're trying to find here is our new grounding conductor size. So the formula for that, uh, that electrical grounding conductor, is our new wire circular mills times our previous ground wire circular mills divided by the previous wire circular mills. And you might want to you know, take some time to really look through these calculations and see what we're doing here because it can get a little confusing. Um, but it's kind of broken down on the next sheet here as well. <clears throat> um, so this table, yet another table that we're obtaining um, additional information regarding area. This time we're utilizing circular mills. And so that's how we're obtaining these values here. And I've highlighted everything so it's, it's nice and clear for you guys. <clears throat> and so once we run that calculation, uh, we arrive at a result of 33090. So then we have to go back to this table and see where that falls in respect to the circular mill values. So you'll see it's between a number four and a number six. A number four is 41,740, and a number six is 26,240. So we'll have to go with a number four in that case because our calculated value is 33,090.
Um, so you'll see we mentioned it here from table eight, chapter nine, the nearest circular mills equal to or greater than 33090 is 41740, which is equivalent to a number four copper wire. Therefore, the adjusted size of that grounding conductor for the number four aughts is a number four. And this will, we'll have to run through these calculations anytime that we're making uh, conductor derations or any sort of adjustment. Um, so here's just kind of a step-by-step, -step, uh, kind of breaking it down a little bit. Uh, so first you want to determine the type of adjustment factor to be utilized for the deration calculation, uh, whether that be an ambient temperature adjustment or an adjustment for more than three current carrying conductors. Um, after that, we're going to want to determine the size of the unadjusted conductor uh, for that particular circuit. So that's where you'll use that uh, 310.15 table and you'll, you'll see what uh, conductor is adequate for that circuit. And that's what we'll start with as our unadjusted. Um, after that, we'll apply the adjustment factors uh, per the applicable table and determine the new adjusted conductor size. Uh, from there, we'll have to adjust the grounding conductor to accommodate for the new adjusted conductors and then finally verify our conduit sizing and upsize as necessary. Um, so here are a few examples, uh, 100 amp circ two pole circuit, uh, the conductors are run along a rooftop, and we're in the city of Phoenix. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and then also, the second example is two 20 amp single pole circuits, and these conductors are routed in a single conduit. So how we show those on our plans, we'll use, we kind of went over this earlier. Um, but for a 100 amp circuit, we're actually going to be using that 75 degree column <clears throat> in THHWs. We make our adjustment, our calculated value 112.5 is less than the 75 degree ampacity of the number one. So the number, um, so that would now be allowable. Uh, for the second example, um, <clears throat> we've got a total of four current carrying conductors in a single conduit because each of these circuits will have two current carrying conductors. And so for, f for that four uh, current carrying conductors, the adjustment is 80%. Um, so we'll have to use number 10s in that case. So 80% times 30 amps, which is the rating for number 10 is 24, which is larger than our overcurrent protection. So that's how we do that. Um, and then I left this one uh, kind of open-ended for you guys to kind of, uh, you know, give it a shot yourselves. Um, there's varying different types of, whether it be sizing or durations, um, but you know, it's, it's pretty broad and pretty much covers all the bases here. So um, if you guys want to give that a shot, you know, you can check with me and I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know how that, how that looks. Um, but yeah, there's some practice there and um, that'll pretty much wrap it up. But you know, if you guys have any questions, um, I know there's kind of a lot of information here, <clears throat> a lot of different tables to use. Um, so if anyone has any questions, you know, come to me and we'll, uh, we'll get that all squared away. But uh, thank you guys for listening, and I uh, appreciate the time.